Today I'm going to share five tips to help you create a card scene. Welcome back, we're still celebrating the summer of stamping at Ellen Hudson and I want to start straight away with tip number one. Prep your idea. Have an idea of what you want to create your scene to be. I often use a sketch but a lot of people aren't confident to use sketches or draw things out freehand so I thought I'd quickly share this way of doing it where you can actually use the stamps that you're going to have on your card to create your sketch. So this is just a piece of copy paper cut the same size as my card front and I'm just stamping out all my images. I'm mixing and matching sets and just seeing what looks good and working out which images are going to go where and where my sentiments going to go and how I'm going to layer it all up and thought this would be a really good tip for someone who doesn't have the confidence to sketch it out themselves. Okay so I've stamped out this is the computer image and it's from the Voices in My Head accessories set so it's a nice large sort of computer image here. And I want to divide the screen up into four sections which I've drawn the four sections in and this brings me to tip number two. Masking is your friend. When you want to create a scene it's a really easy way to add images, to layer them up, to add depth to a scene, to combine stamps that weren't particularly meant to be joined together, to make something look like it's in front, to make something look like it's behind and it's such an easy and fun technique to do. I like to use stamping mask paper and typically I use the Inka Dinka Doo one and I really like this paper. You could just as easily use a post-it note or even copy paper and add a bit of temporary adhesive behind or just hold it in place. It doesn't have to be complicated and I do love the full reveal at the end. Now these little heads, women, are from another new set called Mini Voices in My Head and I wanted to use as many of the different images as I could and I wanted it to make, make it look like we're on a little Zoom talk. So I'm going to just finish up my stamping now and I've got the girl from the Voices in My Head set and I've masked off the eyes and facial features because I want to look make it look like we're looking from the back of her head. So I'm just going to come in with a Copic multi-liner and draw some extra hairlines in here. And this kind of brings me to tip number three. Know what medium you're going to use. That way you can use the appropriate ink for the medium. I don't know how many times I've decided you know in it when I've been planning out a card I've thought I'm going to be either doing some watercoloring or I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring or and then I've used say I might have used the Memento Tuxedo or I might have used a pigment ink and that really limits what I can do so if I know that I'm going to be using Copics like I did today I used Memento Tuxedo Black make sure you use an ink that is going to be compatible with the medium you're going to use. And there are some great inks out on the market nowadays that will be suitable for most mediums. So it's just a matter of giving them a try and seeing which one you like the best and suits your style of stamping. Now I have lots of colouring here. I have sped it up because it did take me quite a while just to color this portion of the image took uh, about an hour and I had such a fun time I used Sandy Olnox it's called the human rainbow collection she has created this document which has all different skin tones and what Copic colors are needed all different hair colors and what Copic colors she used and I don't have every Copic color so I kind of did adapt it a little bit along the way but I did try some of her combos and the results just blew me away. I mean using the purple on the faces for shadows and to add depth to skin color it just makes such a difference and I will link that document or link Sandy Allnock's um, blog 
in the description below and I'll also try and remember to link it at the blog as well. She's very generously um, got this available for us to use and it's so much fun. I can't remember exactly how many Copic colors I used today but seriously I couldn't hold them all in my two hands together. It was there was that many, that many colors. I will list them as well. <laughs> I have got most of the lids off to the side here, but I think I used most of my Copic colors to create today's card. And it's not that complicated a card either. But I didn't mind. I just was having such fun coloring. <laughs> I did add some backgrounds here to my little Zoom faces. And I kept them really simple. I just sort of made it look like they were sitting in front of a wall or maybe in front of some wallpaper somewhere. Seriously, this month at Allen Hudson has been so much fun. This summer of stamping has seen collabs with Avriel and Lawnfawn. Brandy's got a new series of stamps and these stamps from Julie are so much fun. And I love that they coordinate with previously released stamps. So you can mix and match and you can have a lot of fun joining them together. It's one of the great things about Allen Hudson products is they really do coordinate well together and they're so unique and fun. Now I did struggle a little bit coloring this glass of red wine. It's probably because I prefer to drink white wine than red wine. I'd say that would have to be it. <laughs> I think I used every red marker that I owned but in the end it was okay. It turned out okay. Initially I was going to create this card and have her sitting inside but decided to have it look like she was sitting outside in the fresh air enjoying a drink with her friends on Zoom. <laughs> so I've got the clouds stencil, a piece of cardstock, it's cut the same size as the front of my card. I'm using the blending tool to create a really subtle sort of cloud sky with some tumble glass ink. Now I have some more Inka Dinka Do stamping mask paper somewhere. I can't find it. So I've gone and bought some of the Gina K magic masking paper, magic mask, and given this a try. And I've die cut a landscape. Yeah, I really, it, it feels really shiny. <laughs> and I die cut, this is the landscape's grass and decided to have, you know, create some grass at the base of the clouds to, and I'm lucky here that I actually colored the whole base of the card and you'll see why in a minute but I didn't mind that mask paper I'll let you know how I go there's a lot of hoo-ha going on about it people like it a lot so I'm yet I'll let you know if I agree or not <laughs> so here comes tip number four so as well as masking you can actually use layers to build a scene. So what I've done here is actually fussy cut or die cut all the elements. I created a table here. I don't like it. <laughs> so I cut the corners off to make it look like it was a rounded table. And just adhere that to the front of my card directly over the grass because I wanted the grass to look like it was on either side and then the clouds and then add my computer and the girl to the front and I just pop them up on with some foam squares so these are just the thin foam squares they're only a millimeter thick and I'm not sold the perspective was still my head and I'm just not enjoying that at all, at all anyway so I went ahead because sometimes when you think it's not going to look good by the time you finish you actually don't mind it so I went ahead cut away the pieces and added my little speech bubble which is from the speech bubbles set and I did stamp a sentiment on there which is actually from the voices in my head volume three and has some really fun sentiments in that and works really well with all the stamps I didn't like it <laughs> so here's tip number five don't be afraid to change it up you can change it kind of Generally speaking, you can change a card at any point. <laughs> it's usually easier to change it before you commit 
with tape and foam tape and glue and liquid glue is probably the most or the least forgiving so I ended up getting an essential oval die cut a white piece of cardstock and added some shading around the edges to make it look like it was one of those white outdoor tables I just stopped the that's um some non-stick paper I just popped that in there so it didn't actually adhere back down to the card front and I like this much better the perspective's still not perfect but it makes me happier it's less obtrusive obtrusive intrusive <laughs> don't even know my words today okay so here we go again popped up the girl added the wine and we're finally done <laughs> kinda <laughs> let's see if it changes again sometimes I change the card after I've finished making the card or I add bits I'm sure you would never do that tell me which one you preferred I'd love to know <laughs> so thanks for joining me here today if you did like the video please click on the thumbs up button and I hope you try out some of these tips on your card till next time Happy paper crafting. Bye.